I'm not supposed to talk. Hmm, an intriguing proposition. Go on. Hmm, perhaps you're not as silly as those clothes make you look. What makes you say that? You know, I may have the very thing you're looking for. Some time ago, when he still cared for me, he wrote me a love letter. Only... He used the wrong name. Now, addressing one's wife by the wrong name is not unheard of among philandering Romans. But in this case, the name he got wrong was his own. I confronted him about it, and he stammered through some incoherent response. I let it go, eventually, and yet... Questions have lingered in the back of my mind ever since. But... Wait a minute. Why exactly are you helping me? Oh, aren't you charming? I'm quite sure my husband would seethe with impotent rage if he overheard you say that. I love it. It seems our interests are aligned. I imagine knowing his true identity will give me the leverage I need to manage him appropriately. But first, I need you to do something for me. I want you to bring me some wine. Just one small urn should do it. Oh, don't look at me like that. I know this must be hard for you to wrap your sweet little pleb head around. So, you'll help me. Thank you. Here's the letter. Now, perhaps you can tell me who Quinctius really is. What? He's... Oh no, that's, um, quite a lot more serious than I imagined. I only wanted some leverage over him, not to destroy him. Give me that immediately. Nobody else must know. What? No. You... you tricked me, you mendacious little Sturkus. It was a lie of a mission. You were planning this all along and you deliberately concealed it. May Jupiter cut you down. I curse you. I curse your life and mind and memory. May you be unable to walk or eat or drink. May this drag you to the depths. This is outrageous. Demetrius doesn't usually let anyone in here. <laughs> Are you insane? Why would I withdraw? I... Uh, so... It finally caught up with me. I suppose that makes you... What? One of Nero's assassins? So... You're not going to kill me? So much work and money. Ugh. Well, if I do it, do you let me live?
Fine. Ruling this cesspit of a city would have been beneath me anyway. I'll let Demetrius notify the priestess of my withdrawal and release those two from debt bondage. There, you got what you wanted. Now, please, leave my villa and... Just like Apollo and Diana. Feeling all right? That's a shame. Ah, if you look my that, my friend, is quite the dilemma. But after some reflection, I'm leaning toward voting for Maleolus. I do not enjoy the thought of another visit from Domitius, if I vote. Nothing can... I hope... Sisyphus was a Greek king, forcing him to... Anyway... And it's now... Oh. In the rock tunnel, near the stairs, there's a little doorway set into the rock. Inside, if you look carefully, you can see a chest. Unfortunately, one of those golden huntress stat... I bounced... But... He did? Oh, that was... unexpected. I wonder what could have possessed him to do that? Well... I guess it's time for me to step up then. I'll let Equitia know I'll be running. All right, friend. Hope you find a way to break that cycle you're in. Best behavior, I trust. What? Not that it's any of your business. All right. What now? <laughs> Whatever. Shalom, friend. Sentius, I suppose. I'd have to be in... Galerius, the farmer. He's a good man, but... 
I think he's more valuable on the farm than as magistrate. All right, friend. Thanks for the chat. Shalom. Shalom. Centilla and I were in love. Nothing. All right. And I all I know is she loved me. And if she'd known a way out, she'd never have taken her own. I can't prove it, but I just know she's still alive somehow. Even now, it's as if somebody abducted her. I have n My guess? Maliolus had something to do with it. I have no idea where he'd be keeping her, but there is part that I have a... Really? I think first, the palace. If Navia managed to get it, the only other place she could be is somewhere in this... I remember hearing that Dooley had been poking around. All right, friend. Isn't the great temple majestic? Names were a lady. Fine. See you. one of these statues. Hello there, friend. Ah, uh, are you well, stranger? Have you been out in the sun? Sentious, I suppose. Stability is always good for... Yeah? And what's he gonna do for me? He's nothing. Certainly, for a few thousand denarii. Pleasure doing business. Can I? Very well. Galerius, definitely. All right. Nice to... Hello. Galerius. But of course. I hope that... Hello? A new face. Oh. It must be complete. It'll. Why do you ask? I said, I'm planning to hold it before dusk. Hmm. Citizens, it is time. Let us meet to elect our magistrate.
have a quarate body of voters gathered here to elect the city's magistrate. The candidates are Sextus Sentius Imperiosus and late nominee Gallus Galerius Helva. Marcus Malionis Gerges withdrew his candidacy earlier today. As agreed, we shall dispense with ballots and candidates will abstain from voting. Let's make this quick. As I say your name, call your vote. I'll start with you, Horatius. Sentius, of course. Georgius. Galerius. He saved the life of my dear friend Fabia. Dacius. Galerius. Virgil. The man who put a stop to the threats I've been receiving. Galerius. Ulpius. Galerius, the man who saved my life. Rufius. The man who treated my rheumatism. Galerius. Citizens, you have made your decision. Your new magistrate is Gallus Galerius Helva. What? It has been decided. Magistrate Galerius, would you like to make a brief address? Uh, um, I just want to say, this isn't something I ever wanted. Now that you've put your trust in me, I'm going to do everything I can not to let you down. I'll need some time to put together a list of the changes I want to make around here. But I promise you, there will be changes. My first order is that Dooley is to be freed. Horatius, release him from his cell immediately. Please. Wait, do I need to say please? I suppose not. That's it. You can all get on with your day. Nothing else to see here. Move along. Salve. Whatever's in that great temple it up there on the my rock, heart that Galerius I, it. Oh, it. Oh, free. I will cherish this message. Fortune smiles on you today, Julius. Magistrate Galerius here has ordered your release. You're going to let me out of here? I'm sorry it took so long, my friend. And it wouldn't have happened at all if it wasn't for a newcomer. So be sure to offer your thanks when you can. I will. I will. Thank you, Galerius. I'm so happy. I'd love to stay and chat, but I've got a lot of work ahead of me. Why don't you go to the baths, then tell Georges I said you could have some new clothes. Then I want you to go home and rest. I'll speak with you soon, Dooley. Uh, hello? Oh, thank you. You're a big helper. You can have my shiny plaque if and maybe you can help me find my friend Hepper. He gave me a key to the... Oh, thank you. I hope you find it. In the... Oh, look, oh, maybe it is treasure. I can see it from my cell. So pretty. And it's just lying out here.
send you. Thank you know you're here. You have to help me escape before that monster comes back. I'm Centella. I found a way out through the Gate of Horn, but it's locked. So I told him about it, and instead of helping me escape, he locked me up. He wants to keep us all here forever, or until we're turned to gold. He's a monster. You have to let me go so we can kill him and take his key. Sentius, my adoptive father. Furies help me. I'll castrate and crucify him. I don't know. He said the gods are on his side because they don't want us to escape either. Behind me, there's an aqueduct tunnel bringing water from outside the city, so it should lead us outside. The only problem is it's barred by a heavy locked gate, and he has the only key. I'm going to take that key from around his neck, even if it means cutting his throat to get it. I'm done caring about the golden rule. I just want out. Help me, and we can escape together. There won't be enough time. Just you and me. What do you say? There's no time. Wait, did you hear that? Oh, thank you. Now follow... Wait. Did you hear that? He's here. He must be coming in through the door behind me. You distract him. Stay right here and keep him talking while I look for something I can use. What did you do with Centilla? Where is she? So that is how it's going to be. Oh well, this doesn't change anything for me. It's a shame, really. If you'd just done what you were supposed to, you'd have been looping through time forever until you gave up and killed yourself. Just like that soft-hearted pleb, Al. Surely you didn't think you were the only one here who remembered everything. You see, my connection to the portal somehow preserves my memories from one loop to the next. Whether that was Proserpina's intention or a happy accident, I'll never know. But I'm surprised you hadn't noticed. Here I was, thinking you were a little bit sharper than Al was. Or perhaps you're just more willing to break the rules. He was a moralistic fellow, never once compromised on his principles. And because of that fatal flaw, he relived this day many thousands of times before we finally had this conversation. I watched him come through the portal each time, always a little older, a little more disheveled, a little more haunted. And when he finally saw the futility of it all, as you're about to, it broke him. He drank a jug of wine, tied a noose around his neck, and took his own life, just before he was shot with a golden arrow. The next time I awoke, you showed up, but you, you've caught up to where he was so quickly. I'd have preferred if you'd given me more time to enjoy the trappings of my success. How many extra days did you give me? Just the six? Not a lot compared with Al, but I've seized every day, nonetheless. In any case, there's no escape for you except the path that Al took, the path he wrote about on his tablet. What was it? Ah, yes. Better to end it all now than find out what awaits you beyond that portal. So, you discovered my secret. So what? What are you going to do about it? Why? 
isn't it obvious? Because I have grown attached to all this. My title, my beautiful villa, the sun on my face, the music of birds chirping. And as long as this day keeps repeating itself, I get to enjoy it all, over and over again, for eternity. Don't you see? I have found a way to prolong my life indefinitely, to cheat death. I have become, in effect, as immortal as the gods. Can you honestly say you would not wish the same for yourself? Of course. There's no way you could have succeeded. Every soul who has ever found themselves here has broken the golden rule eventually. It is inevitable. Man will always sin sooner or later. Any idiot could tell you this. But where others might see tragedy, I saw opportunity. As I told you the first time we met, I found a way to cheat death. By reliving the same day over and over again forever. And I will continue living long after your dust. Do you really think you can take on a Decurion with that flimsy little bow? Who? Centilla? Where is she? I'm right here, father. Shall suffer I have his for the keys. sins they of can the open one. the gate. Come on, we have to go. Hey, what's happening to you? That light, it it's so bright. Hi there. Gave me a bit of a fray. Thought I was in here alone. I'm Al. Well, here I am. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Really? That's strange. I was just reading an old tablet I found here. Well, trying. My Latin is kind of rusty. But the last entry mentioned someone with the same name. It described an event about 2,000 years ago. Someone with your name appeared in the city out of the shrine of Proserpina. Freed an imprisoned woman named Centilla, who then murdered her captor, breaking some kind of ancient law. It said the attack caused golden statues to come alive, hunting down everyone in the city and turning them into gold. Apparently, the only person to survive was Centilla, while the stranger disappeared in a flash of light. Uh, what? You're saying you were here 2,000 years ago. I... I'm not sure I understand. Uh... I'm sorry, come again? Um, let me see that. God, why does this writing look so familiar? I've spent a lifetime in this place going around and around in circles. This is... Uh, this is disturbing. But I don't understand how I could have written it. I... Uh, I'm not following. So you're saying, because a man from 2,000 years ago is dead, he never created a time portal, so I never went through it, and that's why I don't remember any of this. I guess you saved my life then, as well as helping that poor woman to escape. That's a lot to take in. Maybe we can escape through the same aqueduct Santilla used, if we can find it. I'm going to pause here for a moment and make sure nobody else is ever lured into this temple. You go on ahead.
You're back! But... you're alone. Does that mean you didn't find Al? Oh, what a relief. Thank you so much. I was beginning to think you'd both become trapped in there. Why don't you tell me what you discovered? While we wait. Ah, I see. I thought you might. Well, now you know. I suppose you have questions. You can just call me Charon, if you like. I am sorry I was not completely honest with you when we first met. I do not enjoy deceiving people. Believe me, I do not. But I have learned, from 5,000 years of experience, that most people find comfort in familiarity, in gradual change, and coming to see the truth in their own time. That you died, of course. You were dead when I brought you here. My role, as the servant of the god of the underworld, has always been to assist the Chosen to cross the threshold from the land of the living to the land of the dead. Hmm. Usually, when people do not remember how they died, it is because they suffered a terrible trauma. Most souls would rather not remember. Ask yourself honestly, do you really want to know? As you wish. You were murdered. You were exploring an old tomb when you discovered a cache of forgotten relics, including two silver coins of ancient origin. Unfortunately, as you emerged into daylight, you were set upon by two thieves. A nearby hiker saw the scuffle break out, and leapt to your aid, trying to help you recover your bounty. You both fought bravely, but your assailants were armed, and you were not. There was nothing you or your ally could have done. He died instantly at the scene, and you followed a few hours later. That man's name was Al Wur. You were each in possession of a sacred coin, called Karen's Opal by some. And so it was my duty to bring you here. Perhaps you have heard the tales of the Greeks and Romans bearing their dead with a coin in their mouths, to pay the ferryman. Well, those stories contained a seed of truth, but not any coin would do. A long time ago, my master created a thousand silver coins, and had me distribute them across the world. My orders were simple. Whenever a person died in possession of a coin, I was to locate them and ferry them here. That is a question you would have to ask him, if that were still possible, in light of the path you have chosen. I am just his servant, doing his bidding. Only now, I find myself bereft of purpose. You see, the coins on you and Al were the last of the thousand in existence. There is nobody else to ferry here. Nobody to keep you company. After five thousand years, the underworld has finally run its course. I see no point in keeping you here. But I have to ask one thing. That you keep this to yourself. Look! Here comes Al now! Al! It's so good to see you! You were gone so long I thought I'd never see you again! Kinda lost track of time in there. You wouldn't believe what we found. The ruins of a long-forgotten city. And there was a tablet describing an event 2,000 years ago. Supposedly, the city was destroyed when a woman murdered a tyrant with the help of... Well, my new friend here. I know how crazy that sounds. Maybe not that crazy. That woman. I don't suppose her name was... Centella? How could you... What? She left a tablet of her own. I stumbled across it while I was waiting here. I think she meant for you to read it. Here, take a look. I don't know what became of you. 
or if you'll ever read this, but I want you to know that I will never forget you, or what you did for me. It pains me that so many dear friends were not so fortunate. Ulpius, Sentia, Lucretia, Horatius, Galerius, or Dooley, and the others. But please understand, their blood is on my hands. Sounds like you meant a lot to her. I'd love to hear your story, but first, you two look exhausted. Why don't you hop in my boat and rest while I ferry you back to civilization? Sounds good to me. And you? Are you ready to go home? And here you are. Allow me to introduce myself. As you have already gathered, I've been known by many names. Nergal to the Sumerians, Osiris to the Egyptians, Hades to the Greeks, and Pluto to the Romans. But the one constant through it all has been my title, God of the Underworld. And I've been watching you with curiosity, mortal, ever since your arrival. You're unlike the others. Aren't you? And what is more, you carry a weapon that was never intended for mortals to wield, and you do it so brazenly. But there will be time for your reckoning later. First, as a reward for undoing the desecration of my obelisk, I will allow you to satisfy your curiosity. Ask what you will. My story is many thousands of years long. You will need to be more specific. What do you wish to know? It is a matter of perspective. God is a label I was given by you mortals, not one I gave myself. 
Your ancestors revered me because to them, my knowledge and technology made me incomprehensibly powerful. Just as you might seem so to an insect. But despite all that, there are rules even I must obey. My kin and I all adopted this form long ago, so that we might better understand and communicate with your kind. In time, we grew fond of the sensory delights it affords. Desire, joy, ecstasy, even rage and sorrow, while an acquired taste can be addictive. No. Long ago, I swore to Persephone that I would remain in this form for as long as we remained among your kind. I must honor that. This is my beloved. Like me, she has been known by many names. Eresh Kigel to the Sumerians, Isis to the Egyptians, Persephone to the Greeks, and Proserpina to the Romans. Or perhaps you might know her as the goddess of springtime, the cycle of life and renewal. Your gaze lingers too long. That is my servant. You would have met by the river, though she wears many faces and goes by many names. Kumu Tabal to the Sumerians, Kurti to the Egyptians, Charon to the Greeks, and Charon to the Romans. Her role is to ferry souls between the mortal world and this one, and to make their transition as seamless as possible. For that, she earned herself the infamous, if erroneous, moniker, the ferry. We will talk more later. For now, ask your questions. As you wish. It has come to be known simply as the Underworld. And it exists because of a wager I made long ago. That is a long story. One that began over 3,000 years ago and continues to this day. You see, long ago, my kin and I set out from our home on Elysium to search for other forms of life among the stars. We discovered your planet and witnessed your kind evolving from primates into something lawless and barbaric. You all but destroyed yourselves, your too short lives being extinguished by violence and ignorance and disease. Yet Proserpina saw raw potential in you and persuaded the rest of us it would be squandered without our intervention and stewardship. So we revealed ourselves to your people in a place called Sumer. We offered guidance in agriculture, toolcraft, and law, and you called us gods. For a time, you flourished, but soon you were too many for us to oversee. And as you spread from that cradle of civilization, we saw something disturbing. We had sown the seeds of dependency and confusion, and soon you returned to your old ways of violence and ignorance, this time in our name. My kin had seen enough, and gave up on your kind, condemning you as barbaric and chaotic, scarcely more than animals. We began preparations to return to Elysium, our home world, a utopia unspoilt by conflict, unimaginable in its beauty. But my Proserpina could not bear to abandon your kind without guidance, and knowing it would force the rest of us to leave her behind, she made an extraordinary sacrifice. She gave up her immortality to descend permanently to the ranks of humankind. And so she began her inescapable trajectory toward death. Horrified, I acted swiftly. I placed her in suspended animation in a deep, frozen sleep to prevent age and sickness from claiming her. And then I pleaded with Proserpina's father, who the Romans called Jupiter, to bring her with us to Elysium. It was and is my hope that once there, we might one day learn to undo what she has done to herself. But he refused. I did everything I could to persuade him, but he would not relent. He would rigidly uphold his final pronouncement. 
humans were unworthy of ascension to Elysium, and no exceptions would be made. But seeing that I was aggrieved, he proposed a wager, the terms of which were as follows. If even one human city could prove itself capable of living without sin for a single year, then Proserpina and all of humanity would be permitted to join us in Elysium. My part would be to remain behind, the last of my kind, to watch over you without interfering, and to sit in silent judgment. And so my reward has been to languish here, enduring a 3,000 year winter, waiting for the day your kind proves itself worthy of her faith in you, so that I might take her with me to Elysium and unthaw my goddess of springtime. And here I am. After all this time, still waiting. There were also gods who, like me, have been known by many names. Our leader, Jupiter, as well as Neptune, Saturn, Juno, Minerva, Mars, Venus, Apollo, Diana, Vulcan, Vesta, Ceres, and of course, my beloved. As the first wave of your kind arrived from Sumer, I had them build a city in their own fashion, so that they might be comfortable and recreate their lives here. I had them build the entrance as a vertical shaft leading to baths, to cleanse them of the sins of their former lives, and to prevent escape. I watched wave after wave of Sumerians arrive, and as their civilization declined over the centuries, they were replaced by Egyptians. Of course, believing themselves to be the superior civilization, the Egyptians promptly built over what had been built before. And made. After another thousand years, the Greeks began to arrive, and then the Romans, and they all did the same thing. They built upon the underworlds of their predecessors, renamed their gods, and ensured their foundations were forgotten. To ensure the wage was fair, it was important that my subjects were chosen at random. To this end, I had my servant distribute a thousand tokens fashioned from silver, a rare element at the time, across all of Sumer. Whoever died while in possession of one of them would be located by my servant and ferried to this place, with no memory of how they arrived. As the tokens were discovered, they were traded, smelted, and fashioned into trinkets, and eventually coins spreading to Egypt like seeds on the wind. Later, when they spread to Greece, they would come to be known. Some placed coins in the mouths of their dead, hoping they would awaken here, though they had no way of knowing which coins were fashioned from the... In fact, almost all of the tokens are accounted for. Only two remain. Your kind would have squandered the last of its potential to ascend beyond this rock, and Persephone is along with it. It is a regrettable story. One of the first men who came to this place was a king of Sumer, and a troublemaker. To be rid of him, I returned him to his people, on the condition that my servant erased his memories of this place. But the erasure did not take completely, and he told stories of this place as if describing memories of a dream. His tales were committed to writing, which came to be known as the Epic of Gilgamesh, and his words were twisted and distorted over generations. Later, the Egyptians would adapt Sumer's stories of the underworld, making them wildly intricate and labyrinthine. Their Book of the Dead and Book of Gates bore less and less resemblance to this place in their priests. Then, when the Greeks began to arrive, they proved far more cunning. And in a series of incidents that will not be repeated, five of them, a warrior named Heracles, they each told embellished tales of this place. And so, of course, that is merely the name your people have given to it. That is a story dating back to the very first wave. After the Sumerians finished building their city, the self-declared ruler threw a banquet to celebrate. Now this man was unmarried, 
and many women were vying to become his wife. Prestigious position of power and influence. Of all the women, two were particularly ambitious. Both were beautiful. Their hair woven. Seeing this ostentatious display, the second woman grew in. While the others indulged at the banquet, but I was watching. I took the golden bow left behind by Diana, and I shot that woman in the heart, covering her from head to toe in a layer of molten gold. And I left her to stand there, that she might serve as a grim reminder of what befalls those who sin in my door. But that was not enough, for the entire city was tainted by her sin, and the wager could no longer be won. So I had no choice but to wipe the slate clean. I gilded them all to make way for a new wave and began the wave. And to this day, each of them and all who came after line the halls of this city, inanimate, suspended in time with only their sight and hearing preserved, so they may bear witness to and lament the folly of your kind for eternity silent golden sentinels. I give your kind a second chance of life, as well as ample... And, and so you ask, if I am the one destroying your lie, you destroy yourselves. When my kin depart, the gold... As my collection of golden statues grew, I chose the most ferocious among them, and equipped them each with a duplicate. I've always considered that the cornerstone of morality is the ability to... No attempt to lay out rules like your code of Hammurabi or your... This should come as no surprise to you, since the core principle has been expressed. The Egyptians made a rudimentary attempt with do to the doer to make him do. The Greeks refined it with avoid doing what you would blame others. The Roman Stoics added, treat your inferior as you would wish your superior. Even the so-called cultists hiding among you often It is the simplest of concepts, and each one of you is born with it. Yet none of the peoples who expressed this rule were able to. Enough. You clearly know. I'm able to commune with all of the statues in the city. If she was still conscious, I suppose she could, but she's not. Why do you ask? Then what an odd question. Do you plan to speak in sweeping generalizations, or are you going to give me an example? I have seen no such thing, but in any case, taking one's own life is a self-directed act. It is not one that is done to others, however they may be affected by it. Therefore, it cannot be said that one who commits suicide has done... Now tell me. Ah, the tavern keeper, yes. How is that inconsistent with the rule? I disagree. Having watched that tavern keeper, that is precisely what she would expect from others. She would view it as a game, one she intends to win. Applying this rule always requires speculation to some degree. It requires... Now tell me. You speak of the moneylender. How is that inconsistent with the rule? And he would never have signed a contract pledging his labor for 30 years. All he did was enforce the terms of a contract signed voluntarily by others. Ignoring your irritating sense of moral superiority. I see. And how long might it take such a person to repay their debt? I fail to see how your system of loans is significantly different. Now tell me. The midwife in the palace, yes. How is that inconsistent? The rule is do unto others, meaning other people. Those statues, they are forsaken. 
what happened. Applying this rule always requires us to interpret. Hmm. Supposing you're right, then my law has been broken, and I should turn you all to gold immediately. Is that what you want? Then your desire to be right outweighs your desire to survive. You will make a fine. <laughs> Do you really think you can wound me, a god, with that primitive weapon? How dare you threaten her? This ends now. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. <laughs>